actually ang plano ng immigration na um, una kasi nga ang CD nag-ano na sila na risk na nila yung over 70% na mag-vaccinate nila yung mga tao nila. So, last Monday, um, kung napalag yung news, nag-rejoice na sila eh, nag-celebrate sila at nga parang yung freedom is free game, parang ganyan. Although siyempre, you still have to wear the mask and that, and the, the, the fact of the normal sort of distance and all that. Pero, ang next plan nila is to open up the international border. Although, hindi pa siya nag-finalize, pero they are discussing about opening up the international border. I think it's like that. Hindi ibig sabihin na it will be open to all. Okay? So, una hindi nila yung mga i-opening yung kapasok nila is yung mga Australian na citizen or Australian government president na matagal na natin pinakaulo o na-stuck sa ibang bansa. So, yun yung main priority ng immigration. Secondly, they will open the hub for the skilled workers. Pero yung update niya, they will set up to wait. Ang alam ko, they are having some arrangements as well. Di ba yung travel bubble na pinatawag? Na like, for example, yung New Zealand is one country na meron tayong bubble agreement or travel bubble agreement. Ibig sabihin yun, if you are in New Zealand and you want to come to Australia and you have stayed in New Zealand for at least 14 days, pwede kang makapat ng Australia in the travel bubble. But I understand that they are talking with other countries like Singapore, Malaysia, all that, Japan. So we have to wait for a little bit of my open up. And hopefully, you still work here when we do not open up in Philippines for our partners here, where we will be in a few places or the employment demand the project is certain. Magawa natin na hopefully ma-open up nila yung yung skill bridge na para sa mga nasa labas ng bansa. The other thing na alam po kung hindi na nila dyan is yung mga international students natin. Sila yung mga hindi pa darito pero they opt to study in Australia because they believe in the education system out of Australia. So ito din yung sa mga gusto nila makabalik in other life. Um, kung halimbawa magbukas mo yung bordel dito sa mga bartonero Ay, hello, may gusto mo yun Yung dito, mga bartonero Ano ba yun? Um, Ito ba yun na? Hindi ba yung bartonero doon? Sila yung maghahanap ng parang immigration lawyer o immigration lawyer sa Pilipinas mismo Parang yung process na progress nila? Hindi. Basically, di ba alam naman natin na ang Philippines is one of the countries na kung saan sinasort out ang mga workers, di ba? Kaya nga sa kultura na natin mga Pilipino, parang sa bawat karami sa mga pamilya, is the dad is working overseas or the mom is an OFW. Kasi yun yung parang naging trend ng ang kultura natin mga Pinoy na one parent or both parents are our working parents because of the opportunity to better the life of their kids, mga ganyan. So, ang system of the Pilipinas, that time POEA, as we all know, right? Ang POEA is a government agency na ang trabang nila is they regulate the ins and outs ng mga overseas Filipino workers. So, um, I think instead of looking for their own migration 
agent or okay. maybe seen as a lawyer, um, I think it's best to um, communicate with the agent on the land based the license equipment agency in the Philippines. Because okay. normally, the mga yan, katulad ng nangyari sa inyo, uh, sa iyo, uh, may dilaanan tayo na, na land-based na license equipment agency. When you say license, um, at the end of the day, it's an MPOEA. And I would probably advise na yung mga tao, when they deal, huwag kayong maglalabas ng pera. Um, you have to check kung yung kausap ninyo is really an accredited agent o agent and sa POEA. Kasi may website na tayo. Everything can be checked online. So, if you go um, to the website ng POEA, meron ko ng list doon ng um, mga accredited status, um, accredited agencies. May kita din natin sa POEA website yung mga suspended o yung mga agencies na nagsara na. So, pagka-suspended sila or nagsara o sarado na, obviously, you can't deal with them. And if they're still um, dealing with you guys, then there's a problem. So, only deal with the license of the agency. And as I said, majority of these agencies, meron na silang mga ka-usap o ka-tie-up na mga migration agents, migration lawyers, sa Australia, based sa Australia, correct, yeah. Pero ang mga migration agents, hindi lang naman sila based talaga sa, sa Australia. May mga overseas migration agents din tayo. Pero, ang, um, you have to check kung yung overseas migration agent is licensed. Sa so, tinatawag natin na OMARA, uh, O-M-A-R-A. Website, may website din kami mga migration agents. Sila yung professional body that regulates the um, uh, the license of uh, or the registration ng mga migration sa buong Australia. Unfortunately, or hindi na sa Australia sila. So yung kanilang power is only within Australia. At doon nakakaroon ng opportunity yung mga ibang uh, unscrupulous na tao na i-grabe yung opportunity na they can pretend na they're not with agents kasi hindi sila sakop ng rules <laughs> ng OMARA na pagka nasa Pilipinas and they claim they're not with agents yung i-double check kasi pwede sila magpa-register kahit na always uh, based sila pero kung hindi sila register sa OMARA hindi rin makipigilan ng OMARA yung mga tao sa Pinas na maging migration agent. Pero um, it's risky. Kasi siyempre, you want to be, um, to be assisted by someone who is regulated. Diba? Someone who is licensed and has the, um, the knowledge, the updated knowledge uh, to understand uh, kung uh, tarito, yung mga updated ng mga changes sa immigration, kasi ang changes, tuloy-tuloy. So, ito ulit ko guys, ito si Sir Ron, yung isang uh, licensed immigration agent tapos nag-aaral siya ng immigration law dito sa Australia. So, ang kagandaan ng kasigaan, uh, pagka uh, um, nakipag-communicate uh, ka sa mga land-based uh, na license recruitment agency, they are aware of the law of the POEA o yung policy ng POEA. Kasi syempre, yan ang satisfied most ways yung Australian rules para sa mga uh, uh, employers at yung rules ng POEA kung yung tao ay manggagayang sa Pilipinas. Okay? Um, normally, just for the information of everyone, ang 482 work visa, yan yung tawag dyan, siya yung dating 457 visa na 
tumagal siya ng over 20 years. Tapos tinanggal na nila yun, it became obsolete, so naging uh, 482 word data. In terms of that, um, yung changes na nangyari dyan is uh, introduced nila with their tawag na SAS Levy, S-A-S, which stands for the Skinner Australian Drug. From the system of immigration for the employer to uh, acquire or uh, deploy or nominate a worker from overseas, um, kinakalangan nilang maging approved sponsor nila. So yun yung kailangan, halimbawa, uh, itong FPJ uh, barbers, gusto ninyong mag-angkat ng worker sa overseas. So kinakalangan mag-apply nila ang employer o ang FPJ barbers para maging approved sponsor ng 482 visa ng immigration. Okay? So yung cost na involved in doing that first step is dapat ang magbabay ng new employer. It cannot be taken from the worker. Once that sponsorship is granted, it is granted for 5 years. So ibig sabihin niyan, pwede kayong mag-angkat ng mag-angkat ng mga workers as long na um, valid yung uh, ating sponsorship, which is, as I said, uh, ang validity niya is 5 years. Yung, yun yung unang step. And the sponsorship is to be paid by the employer. Sponsorship is to be paid by the employer. Yung second step niya, pagka-approve sponsor na sila, obviously, mag-ahat sila ng mga workers. Uh, so, they'll go through the process of recruitment. So, ito na yung um, before the COVID, who will be ako, tsaka yung employers, uh, para mag-interview ng live, ng face-to-face, uh, obviously, pre-COVID. Correct. Yeah. And uh, you do the trade test as well, uh, which get the information that and then kapag kami selected ang flow um employees or applicants sa tayo we can proceed on the nomination all right okay. yung nomination na yon um dito po pa sa yung sinasabi ng staff levy kasi pag ka nominate ka ang employer ng worker na nasa office o kahit anong din sa Australia pero hindi siya taga rito at naka work visa holder lang siya for any visa na hindi PR or permanent at hinonomage uh, you know, ng employer doon magbabaya ng employer ng levy so yung levy medyo malaking gastos yan ang ibig sabihin ng levy uh, pag halimbawa ang size ng company is below 10 million ang um, turnover yung latest turnover at katulad nila yan ba yung 2021 na turnover is less than 10 million okay. i-require ng immigration ang bayad ng contribution yun yung levy which is amounting to 1200 each year so ibig sabihin kung barber ang kinukuha natin na 2 years ang visa na pwede mo i-release sa kanila dahil they fall under the short term so 1,200 times 2 years. So, magiging 2,400. So, yan ang tinatawag na top levy na pagbayaran ng employer sa immigration. When it comes to the visa, ito na yung uh, kayo ng mga applicants na napili dyan na mag, uh, um, maglalaro yung mga um, qualifications natin, yung experiences natin, at dapat garam tayong uh, enough evidences to prove na we are still uh, in the position na piniklaim na natin still tayo. Ano ba ba? Barber or the aggressor or pwede rin ka ang mga welder, uh, machinist, mga ganyan. Okay. You have to prove that you have the skill. Normally kami, we require uh, at least five years of, of full-time experience. Pero kinakailangan yan, nabawa, ten years, uh, tapos meron kang beyond the five years experience. Pero kinakailangan two years out of the five years, sakop doon yung two years full-time na nag-work ka as a barber. Okay. Ibig sabihin kung halimbawa out of 10 years, meron kang 5 years na explorer cover pero in the last 5 years, hindi wala kang 2 years out of 5 years as a, a full-time barber experience, hindi rin natin yung pwede i-consider. 
So, kinakailangan, you have minimum of 5 years experience, pero at least 2 years out of 5 years na you have um, um, recent employment sa uh, position na yun. So, yung visa cross na yan, normally, um, pero hindi ito uh, policy ng immigration. Normally, uh, mag-base na dyan yung either employee or the employer may pay for the visa cross. Pero basically, ang, sa amin, ang ginagawa namin is we get the, uh, the, employee, the employer to pay initially for that. Kasi huwag nang kuha sa worker. The reason being is, um, ang POA kasi may rules nila. So we have to go inside with the POA rules. Australian rules, the visa is allowed to be paid by the employee, meaning yung worker or the applicant. Pero when it comes to POA, we have to check kung ano ang rules nila. So, ang um, POA rules, as far as I understand, they won't allow uh, na mag-buy ang worker sa visa cost. So, we have to call inside um, on that kasi nasa Pilipinas na yung worker o yung employee o yung, 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 yung successful applicant. However, ang POA rules, yung land use na recruitment agency, may charge sa equivalent of one month salary ah, okay. sa uh, tao, uh, sa worker. And that is the only way to And that's much in the future. Okay? So basically, kung halimbawa kumikipa tayo ng, uh, for example, 54 months uh, um, annually, to divide it by means, uh, 52 weeks, to extract it one month, then yung one month equivalent of that um, is pwedeng ibayad o i-charge ng land-based equipment agency sa Pinas bilang um, cost sa, to recovery day cost as well sa paghanap ng mga workers, sa facilities, to do the interview, all that and also to give them uh, protection kasi pag pangalimbawa nung pag na tayo sa Australia at may nangyari sa worker thank goodness hindi tayo katulong ng mga bansa na ang Australia is uh, very protective of the workers of the OEC uh, uh, workers na nakalbisa holder dito pero anything that happens ang mananagot dyan is yung agents sa mga Pilipinas under the POVA pero at the same time under the Australian law may pananagutan ang sponsor so pagkikinan natin merong things in common ang Australian policy at ang rule ng POVA is the protection of our Adobayans ng ating mga OFW na we can figure out our modern day heroes Thanks for having me. Okay. So, well, basically, if you want an update, um, kasi nga ang tagal ng Colorado border, pero yung usap-usap na baka um, na, na reopening or relaxing the, the restrictions of the international border is still under um, pinag-uusapan pa nila yan. So, it's still under uh, consideration, uh, under discussion, so matagal pa bago natin until uh, maglabas sila ng, ng, ng final note. Then, so natin malalaman lang. I have my page, um, the Focus Australia Migration Services. That is my business. And um, if you click live on that, so you can follow all our updates. Um, you can also message me from time to time um, if, if you feel like uh, from that page. I also have my personal um, Facebook account, pero normally I uh, just combine work and, and, and personal uh, page. Na rin. 
So, my real name is more you go from down to me. So, you can um, follow me on that as well. Unfortunately, if you can have a request, I can um, click on that because I have to make the size right on the maximum limit um, Facebook. So, you can message me para ako naman ang mag-invite ng friends ito sa inyo para uh, ma-add nyo ko sa inyong account if you like. But otherwise, you can always visit my, my Facebook page which is for to sell all my different services. Okay, maraming salamat sa ito. Napakaganda yung ah, napakalaking tulong sa ating mga kababayan sa Pilipinas. Sa mga barbero dyan sa ating mga sa Pilipinas. Uh, thank you guys, Sir Roy.